So then, all the people go into this booth, and they pull the curtain, and they choose who they would like... Want another one? Who they would like to help take care of our country. That's called voting. I know, it's great. And what your da has to do is go out and visit all these people. Tell them why they should vote for him. Then, with a lot of work and a lot of luck, your old da will be Senator Da. But you can still call me Da. And that's why I have to go away. It'll only be for a little while. And if you need me, you just holler. I'll be there. Because I love you. I love your mother. Always remember that, okay? It's just that, uh, right now we... Well... You and me. We missed out on a lot of time together, you and me, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lose you again. So just remember... I'm always there for you. Yeah. You understand that, though, don't you? Well, it's enough of the cookies. I've got to get going. You take care of yourself. Okay. Mm -mm. You take care of your mom, too. Okay, okay, okay. Didn't realize you'd be leaving so early. Yeah. Well, I, uh... I wanted to stop by the folks, say goodbye to little John. I was going to write you a note. There's a copy of the itinerary there on the table in case you need to get in touch with me. Hi. We'll be in Buffalo by this afternoon. I'll call you tonight. You were just going to leave without waking me? Yes. Why? Because after last night, there seemed to be no point. I'm tired of fighting. So am I. So I guess we do what we have to do. Take care of yourself. You too. I figured I'd let you sleep, so... I gave him his breakfast. Thank you. Good luck on the campaign. Thank you. I hate this. I hate this whole situation. I hate it, too. I don't like leaving like this. The question is, what else can we do about it? I don't know. Neither do I. So where does that leave us? You're the one who'll have to answer that. I love you. I know. And I love you. I just wish that were enough. Wake up. Oh, good morning. What time is it? 7.30. Oh. What happened to you last night? I thought you were off at midnight. Well, I was, but the little Rivera girl had to go into surgery, and I wanted to be there when she got out. 
You didn't wake up, did you? Nah, that's all right. I managed to get through some work, and I made it halfway through the Late Late Show. You know, it's fascinating we don't have Gidget movies in Ireland. I'm sorry I woke you, but I really think we need to talk. As a matter of fact, Faith, I was planning on waking up early myself, getting myself together, waking you to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Faith. Don't. That's not what I want. What then? What I want, what we need, is to understand where we are in terms of each other and this marriage. All right. There's a lot that's been going on. And if we're going to be completely honest with each other, we have to recognize the fact that something is terribly wrong. Well, where do you want to begin? Okay. I know this is going to make you angry. But I think where we have to begin is with Pat Ryan. Want some company? Yes. Well, I always said I like a woman who knows her own mind. Sorry. It's just that I'm going nuts in this place. I've been awake for hours. How does anybody get any sleep around here? Carts rushing past the door, whoosh. Nurses clomping up and down the hall. <laughs> but the worst, the absolute worst thing of all are those things that go off at four second intervals. What things? Those things that go bong, bong. What do you call them? We call them bong bongs. Oh, well, you know what I mean. I'm glad to see you feeling so good this morning. I just want to get up and out of here. Mm, I don't think that's such a hot idea at this moment. Why did I know you'd say that? It must be the white coat. Really, Pat, I just lie here and listen to my muscles scream, exercise, exercise! Physical exertion is the worst possible thing you could do to yourself right now. I know, I know. I've spent countless hours delving into those medical textbooks, trying to understand the furthest most ramifications of a skull fracture. <laughs> Actually, I think it might make a dynamite musical. All about a simple young girl from the Upper West Side of New York who finds true happiness with the right fracture of the temporal lobe. <laughs> we'll call it Nancy. With an exclamation point. Natch. <laughs> you know, for somebody who just got out of a car accident, you sure have a lot of... What? Energy. It's part of my persona. And tell me, Miss Feldman, where did this persona of yours get its start? From my mother. It usually does. Quiet. See, when I was a kid, my mother, an otherwise lovely woman, used to follow me around. And whenever I was down, she'd pat me on the back and say, pep up, Nancy, pep up. Which you did. Which I didn't. Being a somewhat rebellious youth, I, in reaction, became the most languid person you ever saw. Pep up, Nancy, pep up. Watch it. <laughs> it was awful. It lasted for years. I don't see uh... Well, I got tired of being languid. And subsequently, I made a 180-degree turn, of which my parents felt untold relief. And it left me the simple, unspoiled girl you see before you. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the peppy Miss Feldman... As she will undoubtedly be referred to by the New York critics... ...became what she is today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I better get out of here. You really do need a lot of rest. Oh, please don't go. I haven't been this up since I came into this place. It really does help to talk about it. Do you have to do any more doctor-type things? <laughs> nope. I just got off duty 10 minutes ago. Terrific. Why don't you hang around for a while and keep me company? OK. I'd like that a lot. Let me tell you, the last day of the cruise was just about the best. See, they staged this big jitterbug competition. It was a contest. Mm -hmm. Now, I've always been light on my feet, but that night we really outdid ourselves. We danced, we twirled, we twisted, we pulled out just about every trick in the book. Now, you've seen our trophy. Nothing less than first place, right? That's Excuse me, Hi, darling. Yes. Now, sit down and join us. I was just telling the kids about our trip. Yes. Slide over there, Bobby. No, Let no, no, Bob, you just stay just right where you are. John, I need your help at the bar. If you could excuse him for a moment. Uh, certainly. Uh, sure. I'm sorry. 
What's, what's the trouble? I just wanted to get you away from there before you started recounting your shuffleboard escapade. Yeah, so there's no reason why we should... At... Oh, dear. Oh. Mm. Oh. Oh. This is their farewell breakfast, John. You know that Alicia's going off with Ray Woodard and Francis on the campaign tour. What were you thinking of, man? Well, I, I guess I just got lost in my memories. Yes. You, the sea, the moonlight in your hair. <laughs> yes, it was a grand time, but leave the children alone so they can build some of their own memories. Yeah. Oh. Look at them, they're so sad. Three weeks at that age seems like forever. But I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about Julian and Francis. Things aren't so good with him, huh? Ugh, you saw him last night. Well, he didn't say what was wrong. No, not in so many words, but... Let me know that there's trouble between he and Jillian. He's gone over there to see if he could work things out. I just hope these next three weeks are not going to be hurtful for them to be apart. So, I guess Ray's doing a pretty terrific job. I mean, this campaign trip of Frank's, that's really going to pull things together. Is there a problem, Alicia? Oh, no. Uh, no, I... I was just uh, thinking about the trip. It's gonna be a long time. Yeah, it's too bad Joe couldn't go with you after all. Of course, I guess that's a long time to be away from somebody you care so much about. I'll miss you, too. Hi, my name is Frank Ryan, and I'm running for the United States Senate. I hope you'll vote for me. <laughs> no, son. What's wrong? What kind of a greeting is that? I'm trying to get in some practice here. Well, you can fool some of the people with that face, but you, you can't, can't fool, fool your, your mother. mother. I know, I know. Jillian, him. Yeah. What is it? Nothing, nothing, everything. We keep missing each other. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know. Now, look, I'm going upstairs to say goodbye to little John. Yeah. No one gone that far. Me neither. What about the baby, John? Little Edmund. I know. They seem to be getting along so well. I just wish I understood where all the trouble came from. Maybe you ought to go talk to Jill. She could use a good talk with you right now, you know? I'll do that. But I do wish I understood. Go on. We agreed, didn't we? To forget about Pat and deal with only us. But that's not the way it is. Somehow you've gotten it mixed up in your head so that you perceive everything I do as being feelings dictated by Pat Ryan. I know. Well, then give me some credit, Tom. You know who I am. And who I am does not mean who I am in relation to Pat. I don't go through life reacting to Pat Ryan or anyone else. I've been through that, and it's wrong. And it's something I have left behind. Faith, please, I know no, it's... No, Tom, wait. Listen to me, please. Now, when we went into this marriage, we knew what we were doing. No illusions. It was a chance for us to see where we were in terms of each other. Hopefully grow together. And I haven't been allowing that to happen. No, you haven't. But it's not something that happens instantly. We can't just snap our fingers and say, okay, we're happily married, so let's forget about everything and everyone else, except for each other. No. You're right, of course. Go on. But that's it. What you say is so true, Faith. I, I have been behaving outrageously. In fact, that's what I was going to tell you. Thank you for that. But I just wish you would accept the fact that we both have pasts. No, we can't live in the past. But we can't forget them either because they are such an important part of what we are. Faith me, darling. When I was but a lad in Ireland. I think I'm running out of those stories. Tom, I... I can make one up if you like. No. Well, how about some knock-knock jokes? They don't have knock-knock jokes in Ireland. No, but I'm a fast learner. Knock-knock. <laughs> stop. No. I really want to talk this out. What more?
can I say? What more do you want me to say? I'm truly sorry for the way I've been behaving, but what's more important, I won't let it happen again. I love you, I trust you, and I, I desperately want this marriage to work. So, no more pressures, no more recriminations. All right? Yes. All right. Now let me no. start by making you a wonderful breakfast. Eggs and bacon, scrambled, not fried. Right? How does that sound? Fine, but Tom... Oh, Faith. We... Fine. No, I really... I want... love you. I love you. I, I love you. Oh. Did you love her desperately? Who? Whoever it is you're refusing to talk about. I didn't say a word. I know. You're not engaged, are you? No. Going with someone? In love with someone? That's it. I hit it, didn't I? I ain't talking. What if I woo you? Mm, I don't think you're in a position to do much wooing at the moment. That's true. Damn it. <laughs> Chocolate? Nylons? American cigarettes? Come on, Pat. Let's just say things haven't worked out quite as I planned. Darling. Just hold on there for a minute, huh? I just saw Francis. I thought you might be in need of a little mothering right now. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Come along. Sit yourself down there. And you just tell me. Hmm? Yeah. Everything is wrong. And I'm scared. I'm scared it's not going to work. You seem to get close and in touch and then... Ray, or the campaign, or my friendship with Seneca, or something happens and we just seem lost. What do you mean, lost? Apart, separated, with one or all of those things in between us. But you believe that Francis loves you, don't you? Yes. And you love him? Yes. Then, darling, you have the strongest point in the world to work from. I mean, I'm not going to say that there won't be troubles or hard times like in every marriage, but... If you just can remember that you love each other, you can always work your way back to it. That's what I used to think. But? I feel like we don't even know each other anymore. When Frank and I started to work our way back together this year, he explained the pressures of the campaign to me, what that would mean. And I knew it and I understood it, but I thought we would have something together and we don't. Do you know where I am? I'm back in the role of his mistress. No. I have been there before, and I hated it. I swore that it would not happen again. Oh, Jillian, Francis doesn't even think of you in those terms. But that's the way he has to behave. But surely, after the election, things are going to be better. I mean, you're going to be married. He can acknowledge his family. There'll be a whole new start. I don't even know if that's true anymore. I'm beginning to feel like it just can't work. Is it wrong for me to expect something from him? Above and beyond being his lover? A father for Edmund. A friend for me. And friendship and fatherhood require time. And Maeve, I don't believe that he has that kind of time for us. What does Francis say to this? He says yes, but current experience says the opposite. Well, then you're just going to have to forgive me. I think you're just seeing all the obstacles, darling. Why don't you just focus on what can be? You're not giving Francis any credit. Nor are you taking any yourself. Surely there's got to be a way for the two of you to love your, yourselves and, and, and your boys and, and still have lives of your own. I mean, other people have done it. Other people don't have Ray as their campaign manager. Oh, yes, yeah, she probably doesn't make things easier, does she? No, but that's not it. I may not like her, but I can handle that part of it. It's what she and I see in Frank and want for him. I keep thinking that the boys and me are essential to who he is. 
and she feels that his career and the commitment to his public life is what is important to him. What I'm really saying is I'm beginning to think that she's right. You know, I think I know what the problem is between the two of you. What? That you're sitting here and talking to me about this instead of the two of you talking about it together. Oh, Maeve, we've tried. Jill, maybe this trip, maybe it's just a blessing in disguise. It'll give you some time apart for the two of you to realize what you really want, to miss each other, to cool off and put all these extraneous feelings out of the way. I don't know, but I know that it can't go on like this. Maybe you're right. You usually are. Oh, just 90% of the time. I thank you for coming to see me. Oh, darling, you know I'll always be here for you. I do know that. Do you want to see your grandson? I just put him in his crib a little oh, while ago. I thought you'd never ask me. <laughs> Jim. It's going to work out. You'll see. I love you. Mm. This Thursday, meet the not-so-happy couple. She hears wedding bells, but he won't commit. Sounds like a job for the guy who wrote the book on relationships. An all-new Greg Barron's Wake Up Call, part of Sugar-Free Valentine's, Thursday at 10 on SoapNet.